Hello, uh, welcome to my 3D Amuser channel. Uh, this is Cypher Prop video series. Um, in this video, we're going to learn um, how to create shaders in Substance Painter using the maps created in Mari. Um, if you don't know how I created the maps for this uh, video, please go and refer back to the previous video. Um, previous video for this uh, Cypher Prop video series. Um, so uh, here's what I have. Um, in my substance painter i i did the big textures uh this is a um, most common step you do it in substance painter because before putting any shaders on it uh, if you don't know anything about substance painter i highly recommend um go and watch absolute beginner substance painter video i made in this channel um i will have the link in this tutorial so you guys can refer to it then come back and watch it so you have an idea what i did um, so i'm going to go really fast but I try to give as much as information I can. Uh, so the first step I did was I imported my geo or geometry of the grenade um, into Substance Painter and I went to Bake Textures and I make sure it's 4K because I want to have IRS. So I said 49, uh, 4096. Then I turned on all the maps and I said uh, Bake All Texture Sets. So if I hit bake all texture sets, it's going to bake all the textures, all this uh, parameters for all my items. So currently I turned down 101, so it's just showing the 101. So I created a base. So this is my base, let's go to the material. So I'm hitting M to go to the material. So you can uh, channel through all the channels by hitting C on the keyboard. If you hit C, it's gonna be base color, metallic. I'm channeling through my uh, maps in substance so if i had m it goes to the material mode with the lighting on it so then i created a base uh base material what i did was i literally went to the materials and i uh, took my plastic mat material and i plugged it in here so this is what i have so let me check um so instead of color what I did is I plugged in my diffuse map I painted in Mari. Um, so in order to plug in my maps, what I did was I went to my texturing folder. So you, you can see I bring down the maps from Mari in here. Um, if you if you don't know how to do that, uh, I will have a link below in this video so you can go and check it out. Um, I have a separate video for it, how to export textures from Mari uh, to Substance, then bringing it into Substance Painter. Um, I, I really recommend you go and watch it, then you'll have an idea. So it's like a 10 or 15 minute tutorial, so I get like really depth knowledge on it. So it's better you watch it and come back and see this. So what I did, um, I took my material, plastic man tutorial, and I played with my roughness, and I make sure my material is not super shiny. Um, it's kind of because it's kind of like a paint on, paint uh, painted on like a base. Uh, so I want to make sure I did that. Um, those there is also a little bit of paint chipping. I kept it really subtle because I don't want to make super crazy. I want this to be really clean. Um, that's uh, that's my concept thing. That that's my concept idea. So I kept it really subtle. You could see. The chippings are there, but like it's really subtle. It's a new one, so the chipping doesn't happen everywhere. Um, and this is cipher prop too. So most of the cipher cipher props are really clean. So you could see the chippings are really subtle. It's here and there. Uh, so how I did my chipping was since I have my base material at the bottom as a metal, so we layering it a paint material on top of it. So I added a smart mask by going here, and it literally took edge damage. And I just plugged it in my material. So that gave me so that gave me all those maps here. So this paint layer I added because I want if you see here, this is looks like you know really pixelated. My scratches isn't broken up that much. So I put a paint layer on top of it by right clicking and adding a paint layer. And I just literally painted it. That's it. It's that simple. So you could see, um, I literally painted here. So before it was like this, and I added some, I also some added here too. And we are also um, seeing our texturing size in 1024. It's a 1K, that's why it's uh, pixelated, because I wanna make sure I give enough information because the streaming is really getting slow and I uh, changed this to 4K. So I kept it at 1024. Uh, so after that, what I did, I, I want to add like a subtle dust on it. 
So I added like a dust layer. So for the dust layer, what I did, I created a base material. So you can literally take another paint material and I made sure my roughness is not that strong. You could see it's really subtle. You see, you can it's uh, it's break down the surface, but it's really subtle. So I make sure I played with the roughness, and I want to have some kind of height in it. I also kept the height really subtle. You can even literally see it. it. It's super subtle. And I made sure it's I also reduced opacity. So that's how it looked like with under person, and I reduced to twenty seven percentage, um, twenty seven uh, twenty seven percentage here. Uh, so it's exactly like Photoshop. I'm kind of keep on layering my stuff on top of each other. So I added a bronze layer. So I'm going to turn this off and turn it back. So what I did was I created a bronze material and I create a bronze material from from smart materials maybe. Um, there's a bronze. Okay. So from bronze material, what I did, I made sure I took my uh, metal color to white. I want to look metallic. So after I, what I did was um, I created a mask by right clicking creating a black mask, adding a black mask. Then I went and uh, used polygon fill and you know, um, I used polygon fill to the pieces I want. Um, so if you have a good knowledge in Substance Painter, you know exactly what I'm talking about. That's why I recommend you watch the beginner tutorial, then you come and watch this. So it will be easier to you to understand. Um, so, so after that, what I did, um, I added a um, chrome material on top. I want to make sure um, there are different kind of materials in my um, geometry. Uh, I used to have this problem whenever I create materials, everything looks the same, and there is not there is no material variations in my um, texturing or shading um, work. So I really recommend have some uh, materials, but make sure it has some functionality to it. So if you see it, the top I could have both chrome, but it wouldn't be that much contrast in between it. So I added a silver material on top of it and I added to this pieces. Uh, so now if you see, um, that looks pretty good. I don't know well, like we have four variations in this material. That's really important. Okay, let's go to you know mono two. So the one or two is nothing but this materials. So I literally added a. I literally added a steel material. The base material which we used in the previous uh, previous video, so I literally grabbed it and I also added some variation at the bottom. I don't want this to be super reflective, so I kept it really subtle. It is there, but it's silver, but it's really subtle. So as soon as I put my material, so I'm going to show you in this video. So I'm going to delete my mask, uh, remove mask. So if you see, this material is applied everywhere, right? So I want to apply only here. So how do I do it? So I right click and I say black mask. So what black mask does is it just gonna uh, mask everything. So you have to paint white to reveal you know which other pieces you want. So I usually go to polygon fill. So I go here, and you could go to mesh mode or polygon fill or UV mode. So you can select anything from UV. But I'm going going to the mesh mode, and if I click it, it's gonna create. I'll show you. So you see this male, uh, this material has been masked and you can see there's a white uh, white painted on my mask layer. So I'm going to do the everything here. So that's how I create uh, different materials and mask it to uh, pieces I want. So if you see both, you can see like that. So now if you see um, this and this matches and it kind of like have some kind of functionality to it. Uh, let's go one, zero, three. So I'm going to hide both. So if I go to 1003, so here, same thing. I add a base material and everything is made of metal. So I added my paint chip material on top of it. Um, and I make sure it's the same thing. So what I did here was I literally copied these two materials. Um, I copied this and this. How do you copy it? You just hold on shift and you can see control C, control V to any of the items or you can right click and you see copy layers and you can go to other and paste layers. So that's why I did these materials. Then what I do is I go here and plug in my the, uh, right map. So this is 1003. I make sure I plug in 103 UDM uh, map in here. 
so it, it matches so once i have it so add a dust on top of it and i make sure it's the same degree and um, this one i want this ring at the bottom to have um, like a steel material um, i don't want everything to be black from all the way from the bottom to top so i want some material variation between here and here so i added some kind of steel towards it so now if you see there is a material variation at the bottom too and it has some functionality to it towards it so if I go to 1043, so I'm going to add everything. So I have a base material. So I have a base here. This doesn't do anything. And I have a painted chip metal here. So the chipping is really subtle and everything. You know, it's not super. You can see it's here and there, but it's not everywhere. Because um, I want to... Uh, this prop to look sci-fi but the colors doesn't look like it's kind of looks like an old military uh, military color scheme but that's why we did three color schemes in our texturing part so I'm gonna show you how uh, we, we could pull this in so I'm gonna add a dust layer on top of it so if I go and see everything we have this so it's nothing complex it's straightforward and easy so the last two them are what I have was what's inside and we also add some kind of material here i believe it's zero three or zero two zero two so i copied that material and i pasted it in here and um, i just got rid of the mask because this udem is by itself so i just make sure i just pasted it that's it so now i have everything so if i can you know you can see it so now with those all those map um i could go to maya and i could readjust the maps in there so now so now we have everything right so since we did uh, three texture variations how do we you know uh, use the same materials and plug in the maps it's really easy so what i did was you don't have to do separate shading for everything you go to this paint material and go to the textures i believe it should be here so the orange mat it is here so this is 1001 you could see it as i hour over it you could see at the bottom so you can literally drag there. Boom. So everything is there. So I don't have to go and repaint everything. If you want, you could do any adjustments, but like the coloration is there. So I go to 002. So in this, in this, in this uh, udem, we don't have that much. So we don't have to worry about it. So in the third udem, what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go here. The third udem, I'm just put it. And I'm going to the fourth udem. I make sure I'm going to the paint chip metal and I'm going to plug in here. I'm going to the fifth udem so I don't have to worry about it because it's going to be the same. And there's a glass in here because I didn't worry about doing it because um, I did some uh, uh, glass texturing in the shading itself. So there you go. So now what I could do is I could save three substance file and I could separately, you know, um, export my maps um, so same thing if you want to do the third um, variation I have the same third variation here as well I pulled it in you can literally change it so this one I have to not worry about it so this one zero zero three right so I'm just gonna pull this in and zero zero four bingo it's there so now if you see you know i don't have to do anything else i just have to replace the map and just export the textures so i have everything all the dust and everything is there all the chip chipped information is there too if you want you can play with it and have a separate file and you can uh, re-export it um, i wasn't a big fan of like having my serial number here uh, i would love to be have it here or here but anyway so for demo purpose let's have it there you know that's how i paint it so that's how i'm going to show uh, so once I have everything, for this tutorial, what I did was um, in my studio, we started learning uh, Redshift. So I want to do Redshift uh, for my child. So I, I did my shading of Redshift. So you guys, in a, you guys are in a luck to know um, how to export textures for Redshift as well. So if I go to File, Export Textures. So I have a Redshift UDEM uh, preset, how I created my UDEM uh, preset. So if I go to my conf configuration, go to Redshift and you say Duplicate. 
so it's going to give redshift copy then name whatever you want so i'm going to say redshift demo uh, so i don't need emissive so i'm going to get rid of it i usually don't use normal i usually have it so and fo i wasn't sure i think a lot of people said it's metallic so you could say metal metallic here or metal or you could get rid of it i'm going to show you how to create it as well so now if you see deflection a reflection and there's glossiness so in redshift it's called roughness so i'm going to say roughness so what i'm going to do i'm going to create a gray one and i'm going to metallic and i'm just going to pull it in here and i'm going to say gray channel because metallic information is uh, black and white so make sure it's a gray scale so i'm going to copy this and paste it here and i make sure i'm going to say metallic so that's it. That's how I created my preset. So once you have it there, um, demo, you could see those maps plugged it in there. So that's why I created my Vira Udom and my Redshift Udom. Where is Redshift Udom? Okay, there you go. So diffuse, reflection, roughness, height, and metal. So I make sure it's uh, my 4Ks. If you're doing 2K, you know, make sure it's 2K. And it will show uh, your document size because we specify 1, 10, 24. That's why it's showing. But it's everything is. Uh, I usually do EXRs uh, because it's linearized and 32 bit, and it does. It was a lot of information, and I usually don't TIFF. But if you do TIFF, make sure you put uh, change your uh, color space to sRGB or put a gamma node in your diffuse node so that will help. Uh, so once I have it, I exported it, and that's it. We are done. So. Um, that's it for this video tutorial. Uh, we learned a way to recap everything. We learned uh, how to create these materials and how to uh, plug in our diffuse map from Mari. And if you have any questions regarding this, please write me at 3 dmusergmailcom or comment below. So I will have this geo available through a Dropbox link so you guys can download it. And also I will have the maps available to you so you guys can download it and learn it together as well because i want to give um the learning experiences so you guys can learn from it and get developed in your cg career and uh, that's it for the, this tutorial uh, and i'll see you in the next uh, video guys thanks for watching